The never-ending game of innocent people <laughs> upsets me. But I know in order to get out of it, we have to understand that people don't think the way we do. We assume people think the way we do, and this is how bad people take advantage. Far left field analogy, if I will. Let's say someone was gathering money from a bunch of people to collect for sick children of St. Jude's. Now, once they receive all of these thousands of dollars for St. Jude's, I personally believe they had no ill intent. All they wanted to do was collect money for children. But what happens is you pull up to a gas station one day and you forgot your wallet. And in forgetting your wallet, here lies thousands of dollars. I can innocently take $25 and put in my gas tank and when I get my credit card back, give the $25 back. But you've just broken your seal. So now you continue to take and take from this money and all of a sudden, boom. You're a scammer. That's what they do to innocent, nice people. That's what happened in York, South Carolina to the innocent, nice, transgendered Thomas Harden. Thomas Harden is a nice person. And we nice people think the nicer we are. If the bad person takes advantage of us, if they can just look within themselves, they'll snap out of it, see how nice we are, and they'll stop taking advantage of us. But that's not what Tyler Terry did, you see. Tyler Terry was living with Thomas Harden, not paying rent, doing whatever he wanted to do, taking advantage of a nice person. Each day, you nice person watching this, you allow someone to take advantage of you. You're only teaching them how to treat you. They won't snap out of anything on their own. They don't think like you. Tyler Terry did not think like Thomas Harden. So on this date right here, This date was a culmination of a nice person, Thomas Harden, against an evil person, Tyler Terry. You see, Tyler Terry had been sending threats, all kind of crazy phone calls, saying what he was going to do to Thomas Harden for putting him out of Thomas Harden's own place. He began to call him names and say slanderous things. And with Thomas Harden being a transgender, we can only guess what some of those things were. Nonetheless, on the date of May 2nd, Tyler Terry will pull up to Thomas Harding's home, driven there by his girlfriend, partner, whatever relationship thingamajig they have. Adrian will pull up to this location and will let Tyler get out of the car. Tyler will go inside of this house and murder Thomas Harden. Isn't that such the opposite of what nice people think? One day they'll wake up and see how much of a good friend I am, not realizing one day you just won't wake up. But on this day, as, T as Tyler leaves and Thomas Harden lies dead between the couch and the door in the living room, begins the madness that I can only call madness. 
<sighs> Later on this day, this faux Bunny and Clyde will try to take the lives of a couple of other people simply just to rob them for their vehicles. Starting all the way from Ehrlich's, going all the way to the Taco Bell on J.A. Cochran. For what? To simply take a car? Desperation? Is there something else these two lovebirds have in common that they've done that we don't know about yet? I mean, I have a confession. Adrian Simpson is married. But where is her husband as she's going around with Tyler Terry? Cue to the next date. I don't believe in superstitious things such as numbers, but man, 13 must really be an unlucky number as we sit here 13 days later on May 15th. Let me paint a picture for you guys. You and your wife, Barbara Goodkin, have enjoyed a nice evening on the town this Saturday night, and you're in traffic in St. Louis County, far from South Carolina. You sit there in your car, and something crazy happens that you only think that could happen in a movie. Someone comes up to your car, and they shoot your wife, Barbara Goodkin, killing her instantly. They shoot you as well, but you don't get the pleasure of dying. Going on to another life, still protecting your wife, you live. You live because the bullet they shot you with hits your cell phone, saving your life. Can you imagine? Can you imagine being Mr. Goodkin? Can you imagine looking at this cell phone in your hand that night in the emergency room? Can you imagine the random day since May 15th he's held that cell phone looking at it? Can you imagine how many times he wished and prayed that that cell phone was in his wife's pocket? Ten fifteen p.m. Let's move to 11.45 p.m. on the same night. Your name is Dr. Sergi Zakharov, and you just came back from a nice vacation in Florida. Coming from Florida back to St. Louis, I bet, as he wanders and waits for his Uber ride to pick him up, man, what am I going to have to quarantine after going to Florida? Which is going to be ironic at the end of this story. Don't forget that I said that. Just imagine as he's sitting there on this Saturday night, 15 minutes, he's so close to reaching May 16th, which he will never reach because again, Tyler Terry comes and takes his life for his Uber ride. So we moved to just two days later on May the 17th. And this is very interesting because we actually started this in Chester County in South Carolina. And the couple moved all the way to St. Louis, Missouri. But I guess when you get scared, there's nothing or no place like home. So just two days later, we are back in Chester County, South Carolina. It's nighttime. It's near a Bojangles chicken joint. And the police go on a 20 to 30 minute chase. Now, Tyler gets away. But at least the good part is two things, actually. As we can see, bullet holes going directly through the police vehicle, which would have been aimed at the police officer's head. But the good news is no one dies. And yes, they take Adrian into custody on this day. Another good thing is now the police have keyed in on Tyler Terry and we can stop this nightmare from continuing on. They officially know of him on May 17th, 
although I must say Tyler Terry was a person of interest all the way back going to Thomas Harden due to his friends looking at him suspiciously and Thomas telling people of the many arguments and threats that came from Tyler Terry. Two days later, on May the 19th, a body will be found in a ditch. This body will belong to Eugene Simpson, you see. <laughs> Although she may have been Tyler's girlfriend, Adrian was still married to Eugene. And it appears that Eugene has been missing since May the 2nd, the day all of this started. So her husband is found in a ditch. She's a person of interest and she's in police custody. And we can all assume that Tyler Terry murdered her husband as well. His body is identified the next day on May the 20th. And he's all alone as he goes on foot deep into the woods. He has on a black t-shirt, pants, no shoes, no socks, and he's surviving out here for days at a time as the police are trying to hone in on his position. And now it's May 23rd and I have a smirk on my face as I think about Richard Ramirez, you know. I did a video on him and uh, a serial killer out on the West Coast in California. But it's interesting on this day because Richard Ramirez was caught by the community. And the same thing is going to happen here with Mr. Terry. As the community is going to call in saying that they see him running on foot. You have to clear these locations. And if you don't clear these locations, the police will continue to search. Which is exactly what they did until he was found and captured. Skinny, dry, looking distraught. But police say he was all there inside of his mind. Nothing crazy. And as we end this unnecessary spree that Mr. Tyler Terry went on with his girlfriend, Adrian Simpson, I just sit and I wonder, why did this all happen? I want to know about his past. I would love to hear from his father. Wait. He wrote like a three or four page confession. And in one part it said, I burned down the houses. Ha, ha, ha. And he said, yeah, dad, I did it all by myself and I didn't have no help. Donnie Terry says after four years in juvenile detention, his son Tyler was able to convince authorities he was reformed, but now believes it was all an act. For a time, his father says, Tyler Terry lived with his mother in Ohio. And that didn't go well either, he says. Kids picked on him and stuff like that, so he, um, he eventually stopped going to school. When he came back to South Carolina to live with his father, his father says he had to kick him out of the house. He was, you know, violent here, you know, knocking holes in walls, arguing, not listening. So I had to uh, evict him out of here. Kicked him out. Tried to burn down houses. And he kicked him out. And he unleashed his son with this anger that he knew about onto the public for all of us to deal with. The final days... Moving to May the 23rd, residents around in that area were all told to stay within their house, full of fear. Sad part about it is Tyler Terry is a father of a three-year-old little girl. Who failed Tyler Terry? Did his parents fail him? Did we fail him as a society? You know what I hate when it comes to stories like Bunny and Clyde? I hate that whenever there's a bunch of victims involved, we begin to focus on the suspect and we focus on the suspect so much and sensationalize it. We don't care about the victims. And when you don't care about the victims, you can begin to change things into love stories such as Bunny and Clyde. Or they rally for the people going against the man. These situations aren't true. When you see mass breeze like this, it's somebody who has nothing to lose. Nothing to lose. And since they have nothing to lose, they'll do anything and kill anyone as fast as they can, even just to take their vehicle and take their car. I don't think that this situation will be looked at like this. But it's something that we should keep our eye on for the future. 
I'll be keeping up with this case in the future to just to see what happens during the trial. And I will update you um, with information as much as possible. Until then, make sure you hit the subscribe button and uh, follow me on my channel as I will be going over many, many more true crime cases. And always stay tuned to my full documentaries with one on Karen Bodine coming in the near future. As always, don't kill, make a sandwich.